With more and more analysts talking about the possibility of a bear market approaching, a lot of people have been looking for stocks that have a long history of delivering consistent monthly dividends to shareholders, or even better, without ever having to reduce or even suspend their dividend. With nearly every stock across every single sector being down for the year, this means that many are basically on sale for a reduced amount. So if you can manage to pick up some shares at these discounted rates, you can basically collect more dividends each month. So with that being said, I decided to go on a hunt searching through monthly dividend stocks, and in today's video, we're going to take a look at four stocks that pay dividends monthly, and as of the making of this video, have never cut their dividend at any time in their history. It doesn't necessarily mean they've grown their dividend every year, but up until this point, they've never had to reduce it regardless of economic conditions. This indicates that these companies have some pretty stellar management teams behind them, having been able to do a really good job at running their organizations. Plus, given the market sell-off this year, all of these stocks are currently yielding at least 4%, with one currently yielding over 9%. But it's important to keep in mind that just because these stocks have never reduced their dividend amounts doesn't mean that they won't ever cut their dividend. Companies are never required to pay dividends to shareholders and can freely reduce or even eliminate their dividend distributions. But these companies we're going to take a look at have such a long history of consistent payments that it seems unlikely that they'd reduce their dividends unless they all of a sudden happen to go through some pretty significant difficulties. All of these companies made it through the pandemic, and some even went through the 2008 financial crisis without ever having to reduce their dividends, which is really impressive. And as I always like to say, be sure to diversify your portfolio across different holdings and sectors in order to reduce the amount of risk you're exposed to. In the event one of your holdings reduces their dividend amount, you'll still be able to rely on your other holdings for income. Always perform your own research and due diligence before you invest so that you know what exactly you're putting your money into. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. The first company on this list is Main Street Capital, ticker symbol M-A-I-N. Main Street's a private equity firm that specializes in providing equity capital to lower middle market companies. They provide financing for recapitalizations, management buyouts, refinancing, and mature later stage growth. Main Street seeks to partner with entrepreneurs, business owners, and management teams and generally provides one-stop financing alternatives within its lower middle market portfolio. They like to take 5% minority and up to 50% majority equity investments in the companies that they lend to. The company's been around since 2007, which makes them one of the older BDCs out there. Currently trading for $38.61 per share, Main Street Capital currently offers a monthly dividend yield of 6.68%. Their stock currently pays $0.21.5 cents per share in monthly dividends, and as you can see in their latest investor presentation, even during the 2008 financial crisis and COVID, Main Street has never cut their dividend throughout the entirety of their existence. But again, just because they've been able to maintain their dividend all these years doesn't guarantee that they'll always be able to. Since their IPO, this company's been able to grow their monthly dividend amount by 95%, which definitely makes them stand out among business development companies. They also issue special dividends every once in a while, but it's pretty rare that they do so. They don't pay them as often as Hercules Capital, Capital Southwest, or some other BDCs we've looked at before. When it comes to their investment portfolio, Main Street Capital has one of the most diverse debt portfolios I've ever seen for a BDC. Since diversification helps reduce the amount of risk you're exposed to, this is definitely a good thing. I also like how they're not heavily exposed to some of the riskier sectors like hotels, restaurants, and media production companies. These types of industries are typically considered more cyclical than others, and personally, they're the types of companies that I just like to avoid. It might be slightly unrelated, but for example, there's a lot of hotel and leisure REITs out there that still don't pay dividends or only pay shareholders a fraction of what they used to pay before the pandemic hit. One more metric with Main Street that I think is pretty impressive is how much their book value continues to grow over the years. They currently experience some of the most impressive book value for any BDC I've come across, and they contribute that to their focus on equity investments in their underserved lower middle market debt portfolio. This section accounts for roughly 49% of their debt portfolio, and usually these types of debt are considered riskier than senior secured debt investments, but I mean, hey, Main Street's had a pretty solid track record in terms of their equity investments, so they've been making some really good picks up to this point. So far for the year, their stock is down roughly 13%, but you can see since their IPO, Main Street stock has grown by an incredible 157%, which is really exceptional for a business development company. A lot of BDCs tend to hover around their IPO price, but this is another thing that makes Main Street so much different from their peers. All in all, with their share price continuing to fall, this might be a really good opportunity to pick up more shares of this stock, which to date has had a really solid track record in terms of growth and being able to deliver strong financial results. Up next, we have Stag Industrial, ticker symbol STAG. Stag is a real estate investment trust focused on the acquisition and operation of single-tenant industrial properties throughout the United States. 
They tout being the only pure play industrial REIT that's active across the entire domestic industrial real estate market. Founded in 2010, the company currently owns over 108 million square feet of industrial real estate across 544 different properties in 48 states according to their fourth quarter investor presentation. This gives them an equity market capitalization of over $8.7 billion, making them one of the largest owners and operators of U.S. industrial real estate. Right now their stock trades for $34.12 per share and it pays a monthly dividend of a little over $0.12 cents per share. This gives their stock a current dividend yield of 4.28% according to Google. Stag used to pay dividends quarterly up until 2013 when they decided to make the switch to monthly dividends. As you can see, the company does typically increase their dividend every year, but growth has been pretty minuscule. In the last nine years, they've grown their dividend distribution amount by only about two cents a month. So while growth is pretty pathetic here, at least they've been able to keep it growing without any cuts. They were able to make it through the pandemic and fully recover from it. One reason why Stag Industrial has been able to maintain this stable growth has to do with their selective approach to acquiring new properties. Roughly 40% of the buildings Stag owns handles e-commerce activity. So this can be anything from product storage to fulfillment and shipping centers for companies that take online orders. Some of their largest tenants would include companies like Amazon, FedEx, and American Tire Distributors, among others. You can see roughly 59% of their tenants earn over a billion dollars a year in revenue, so these are pretty big well-known companies that Stag typically works with. Their financials also point a really nice picture as everything from revenue, book value, and adjusted funds from operation have seen year-over-year -year growth over the last five years. Up until this point, Stag has definitely been more of a growth stock than an income stock since their IPO. You can see since being publicly listed, their stock has grown 178% since April of 2011. Their stock is currently down over 27% for the year, despite continuing to post good numbers in their financials. In the end, Stag is a stock that's continued to move along despite its share price being down pretty significantly when compared to some of the others on this list. There's definitely not much dividend growth to be found with Stag if that's something that you're looking for, but I think it might be worth considering if you are looking for a stable monthly dividend stock for your portfolio. Up next on this list, we have Realty Income, ticker symbol O. For more than 53 years, Realty Income has been acquiring and managing freestanding commercial real estate properties that generate rental revenue under long-term net lease agreements. With over 11,000 properties in all 50 states as well as Puerto Rico and a growing presence internationally, Realty Income is referred to as the monthly dividend company for their long-standing ability to deliver monthly dividends with consistent growth. Currently trading for $64.56 per share, Realty Income stock is currently offering a dividend yield of 4.59%. To date, this company has paid 621 consecutive monthly dividends and have grown their dividend for 98 consecutive quarters. This makes them one of the three REITs that are considered a dividend aristocrat. You can also see on their website that this stock has averaged a pretty impressive 15.3% annual return since being listed on the New York Stock Exchange. In their latest investor presentation, Realty Income is one of the top 10 largest REITs in the world with the goal of becoming a top 5 global REIT. And based on their latest moves, the company appears to be pursuing growth pretty aggressively. They recently just bought Encore Boston Harbor for $1.7 billion, which is their first property in the gaming industry. They also just recently combined with another REIT called Verreit back in November of last year. Their real estate portfolio is full of recession-proof businesses including drug stores like Walgreens and CVS, discount stores like Dollar General and Family Dollar, and shipping centers for FedEx. They do have movie theaters and gyms in their portfolio, but as I've highlighted in previous videos, over the years Realty Income has slowly been moving away from owning these types of businesses. A lot of these companies struggled hard during the lockdown, but Realty Income made it through without having to reduce their dividend, which is great. Finally, when looking at this stock's performance, you can see that it's currently down over 9% for the year, which isn't as much as Stag Industrial or Main Street. Historically speaking, Realty Income stock has been less volatile than others, which is good. You can see since their IPO, Realty Income stock has soared 673% since October of 1994. In conclusion, there's several reasons why Realty Income is my favorite read out there. Its long history of dependable monthly dividends with growth is pretty unmatched when compared to most other monthly dividend stocks. It's a stock that no matter the market, I plan to continue to buy more shares of. Finally, the last stock we're going to look at today is Pennant Park Floating Rate Capital, ticker symbol PFLT. They're a business development company that seeks to make secondary direct, debt, equity, and loan investments. They seek to invest through floating rate loans in private or thinly traded public middle market companies. It primarily invests in the United States and to a limited extent non-U.S. companies. The fund typically invests between $2 million and $20 million into each business. Additionally, they invest in equity securities such as preferred stock, common stock, warrants, or options. Currently offering a 9.36% dividend yield to shareholders, Pennant Park currently trades for $12.18 per share. 
Right now it pays a monthly dividend of 9.5 cents per share every month, and in fact this is what the stock has always been paying since almost back to its inception. The last time this stock grew its dividend was all the way back in 2015. So if you're looking for growth, you're not going to experience it with this stock unless you choose to reinvest your dividends. But at over a 9% yield and having never cut their dividend before, this is a good option for people seeking high income today or for people who want to create a large dividend snowball. Pennant Park touts a highly selective investment strategy where they only provide financing to a small fraction of the companies that meet their requirements for funding. Their portfolio consists of 87% senior debt, which again is considered safer than other types of debt, including equity. 115 companies make up their portfolio as of fourth quarter 2021, and it's pretty well diversified across a lot of different sectors. Their average investment size is $10.3 million, and they have a yield at cost on debt of 7.5%, which is pretty typical from other business development companies that I've looked at. The reason why Pennant Park hasn't grown their dividend like other BDCs have, such as Main Street Capital, is because they pursue a different strategy than those other BDCs. While other business development companies out there go after higher growth companies, Pennant Park likes to focus more on capital preservation, and they invest in companies that they believe are generally lower risk. So while this stock isn't a growth machine, it is a BDC that likes to focus more on stability. With that being said, because long-term growth isn't their objective, PFLT has basically flatlined since their inception in 2011. Right now it trades for $12.18, which is $1.22 less per share when compared to their IPO price back in 2011. But before 2022 started, along with all this volatility, it was trading above its IPO price at nearly $14 a share. But as of right now, their stock is down 5.95% for the year. So if you're looking for some high income from a company that's up to this point hasn't had to ever reduce their dividend, then Pennant Park might be worth considering for you. And that's going to conclude our list of high yield monthly dividend stocks that have never had to reduce their dividend before. Feel free to share your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. Let me know if you happen to own any of these companies or if you're avoiding any for right now. Remember to always perform your own research and due diligence before investing in any company and diversify your holdings too. All right, everyone, that's going to wrap up today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If this video benefited you in any sort of way, please click the like button below and click subscribe if you want to see more dividend investing strategy videos. It would just let me know that there's a sizable enough audience out there who wants this kind of content, and I'll continue to provide you all with that content. All right, everyone, thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Take care.